As we stare out into the thousands of stars across our night sky, it is easy to see the limitless possibilities of space as breathtaking. Beauty, however, is in the eye of the beholder. And although our moon has been the subject of many cultural landmarks, such as Neil Armstrong's giant leaps for mankind, others admire its crater abundant surface as an invitation for nuclear destruction. Shocking as it may sound, before the US government embarked on the historic moon landing, they seriously considered detonating a nuclear bomb on the moon as a political move during the Cold War. And they were not the only ones considering this crazy idea. Lasting over 40 years since the end of World War II, the Cold War saw intense tension between the Soviet Union, the United States, and their respective allies. As hostilities grew between these two global superpowers, so did fears of their potential to annihilate each other with weapons of mass destruction. As the world anxiously held its breath knowing that a nuclear bomb could drop at any time, an early shock echoed around the world on October 4, 1957. When the Soviet Union successfully launched Sputnik 1, the first artificial satellite to orbit the Earth. This sparked a significant precedent in the power struggle between the US and the Soviet Union, which manifested in the space race, a competition for technological prestige in the unexplored territory of space. Unfortunately for the US and their allies, the early initiatives to launch satellites into orbit, such as Project Vanguard, resulted in disasters of explosion and media ridicule being known as the Flopnik and Kaputnik, and what followed was a period of public worry in the Western nations, known as the Sputnik Crisis. The US were supposedly the dominant global superpower, and yet the communist ideals of the Soviets seemed to prove otherwise in the field of science with this momentous leap of technology. Although it was a worry, many major news reporters greatly exaggerated the danger of the satellite and pushed the narrative of a nation in shock for sensationalism. Contrary to popular belief, there is actually very little evidence to suggest that there was, in fact, a mass panic plaguing the US population when Sputnik launched. Instead, it was an elite panic of key political leaders, journalists, scientists, and the wealthy, which enabled US President Eisenhower to push for many of the early space race programs to ease this so-called public hysteria. The wider public, in contrast, was generally indifferent to the lunar missions due to its impracticality to the threat of nuclear warfare and its unimportance to the economic recession happening at the time. In addition, the newspapers reported rumors of Soviet plans to detonate nuclear bombs on the moon in celebration of the October Revolution, which was a successful seize of the government power in 1917, led by Vladimir Lenin and his communist Bolshevik party. Fears were stirred and speculation of its likely failure of hitting the moon, which would result in its explosive return to Earth. Surprisingly, some of these rumors turned out to be true. The Soviet project, codenamed E, planned to send a probe to the moon to take photographs of the lunar surface and to finally initiate a nuclear strike there to showcase their power. As a result, in 1958, the United States Air Force enlisted the Armor Research Foundation, now known as the Illinois Institute of Technology, to begin highly confidential research into the consequences of a nuclear explosion on the moon. Gerard Kuiper, who the Kuiper Belt is named after, Carl Sagan, who primarily chose the selections of the Voyager Golden Record, and Leonard Reifel, who was the deputy director of NASA's Apollo program, were among the 10 scientists gathered to complete what has now been declassified as Project A119, or its more inconspicuous title, A Study of Lunar Research Flights. In the beginning, they considered using a hydrogen bomb to blow up the lunar surface. However, it was determined to be too heavy for transport by launcher missiles. Instead, they chose a W25 nuclear warhead, which was lighter and had a lower explosive energy release. In comparison, the Little Boy Bomb, which devastated the city of Hiroshima in World War II, had roughly nine times more explosive power. One proposal to deliver the W-25 warhead was to attach it to a rocket, which would carry it to the shadowed side of the moon's terminator, the division between the dark and illuminated sides of the moon. Upon detonation, its resulting dust cloud would be lit up by the sun so that enemies and allies of the US could witness this display of force. 
Although initially proposed by the U.S. Air Force for military and political purposes, such as determining the capabilities of nuclear weapons for space warfare, and demonstrating a feat of advanced technological capability against the leading Soviets, the leader of the project, Leonard Rifle, voiced his concerns of the scientific consequences resulting from disrupting the moon's environment. Less than a year later, on January 1959, the project was cancelled by the United States Air Force out of fear of several consequences that would arise if the project were to be carried out. Harsh criticism from both the US and international population would likely outweigh its boost to national morale. The resulting radiation from the nuclear detonation would prevent future lunar research projects, and if the launch were to fail, it would pose a major risk to the local area and its population. The US were not the only ones to come to these conclusions. As it was revealed, the similar Soviet Project E never made it past its mock-up stages due to their inefficient nuclear weapon designs at the time, the risk it posed to Soviet territory if the launch were to fail, and if it were to accidentally detonate in another country due to failures in its launch stages, it would be the perpetrator of a major international disaster in an already tense Cold War. Due to the sensitive nature of Project A119, its existence was kept from the public eye for over 40 years. Against all odds, however, when writer Kie Davidson investigated one of its researchers, Carl Sagan, for the 1999 biography, Carl Sagan, A Life, it was discovered that Sagan revealed details of the classified project when he applied for an academic scholarship at the University of California, Berkeley. These details included the titles of two research papers from the project, Possible Contribution of Lunar Nuclear Weapons Detonations, and radiological contamination of the moon by nuclear weapons detonations. When this discovery was published with the biography, a book review in a reputable academic journal highlighted this leak and an academic critiqued Davidson's claims of Sagan's illegal disclosure of classified information with no substantiation. Rifle, the scientist who headed the secret project, broke his anonymity on May 2000 to take the opportunity to set the record straight. He confirmed Davidson's claims that Sagan had indeed revealed these classified secrets in breach of his signed security contract with the United States Air Force, and revealed further general details of the project itself, which was not even known to have existed. The resulting media publicity of his statements prompted to a freedom of information legal request into the project, and, as a result, a single volume of its research was made public. Only one has been released and only one will ever be released according to the Armour Research Foundation archives, as the other eight volumes were destroyed by them in the late 1980s. You can rest assured though, as the future considerations in blowing up the moon will not happen anytime soon, due to the 1963 Partial Nuclear Test Ban Treaty and the 1967 Outer Space Treaty. Considering the secrecy that surrounded the Cold War, Project A119 is merely a small shine into its dark history, even with the explosive light of a W25 warhead. It is still concerning to realize that Armstrong's iconic moonwalk could have easily been replaced with a radiative lunar wasteland. With the endless reaches of space and equally incessant plays of politics, Project A119 is indeed one of many explorations that evoke infinite wonder. We hope you enjoyed our look into the US and Soviet plans of nuking our very own moon. What do you think life today could be like if the project had fully gone through? Share your thoughts, suggestions, and questions in the comments below. Interesting new content like this will be uploaded every week, so be sure to like and subscribe to see more of Infinite Wonder.